This video follows on from my review of Persona 3 The Movie 1 Spring of Birth. I will be making comparisons between the two films, and I do assume a base knowledge of Persona 3, from either having played the game, watched the first film, watched my review, read a Wikipedia page, either way, the link to my first review is on screen now. Persona 3 The Movie 2 Midsummer Night's Dream is a psychological action film based on the game Persona 3 by Atlas. It acts as a sequel to Persona 3 The Movie 1 Spring of Birth. It was animated by A1 Pictures, known for their work on Persona Trinity Soul, Persona 4 The Golden Animation, and Magi Kingdom of Magic. But without further ado, I present the anime review of Persona 3 The Movie Midsummer Night's Dream. The seasons have changed and it's time for a new chapter in the story of Persona 3 and shows our team actively trying to destroy the full moon shadows in order to stop the events of the Dark Hour using the power of their Persona. Now what you need to know about Midsummer Night's Dream is that there has been a change of staff since Spring of Birth. Most importantly, there's a brand new director, and their approach to this narrative is very, very different. The director of Spring of Birth, Noriaki Akitaya, took a look at the story of Persona 3 and worked to develop his own narrative around it. He created new scenarios based on the game's plotline, and it made for a great and closed story. Midsummer Night's Dream director Tomohisa Taguchi had a different philosophy about it however and did not aim to provide an enclosed narrative and instead strive to create an accurate adaptation and a chapter within this narrative. There's character and story arcs going on here but there isn't much new about them and it does make me miss much of the style we saw in the first film. But this approach still has value and Taguchi does display a clear understanding of the source material and what is important about it. Every plot point is given enough time to be thoroughly explored, yet he covers such a large chunk of the narrative. It's heavily efficient and although there isn't much new about it, he understands Persona 3 so well that it's an eye-opener to see all of these scenes expressed so well. The small creative freedoms Taguchi took, while seemingly trivial, drives home some of the points and makes them far more effective. As well as this, there's a clear attempt to distinguish between the everyday lives of our characters and the battles they must go through in Tartarus. Characters look active and lively in these battles and it's where they can really unleash their personalities and despite these being life or death challenges, they're having fun doing so. It's a struggle of power and it makes it understandable that some of these characters are doubting whether they really want to get rid of the Dark Hour despite it being responsible for many deaths. It makes for a less interesting film in terms of narrative structure but what's been packed into these 90 minutes is a brilliant retelling of Persona 3. Characterization is important for any psychological series, and Persona 3 is no exception. Introducing four new characters, I guess Ken, Shinjiro and Koromaru the dog, the cast has certainly expanded and allowed for some fresh character development. However, the issue is that that's the only character development. In the first film, we got this developing relationship between Yukari, Junpei and Yuki filled with contempt, jealousy and malice. It was a team coming together despite Yuki's dislikable disposition. However, this is completely thrown out of the window in Midsummer Night's Dream, and they are far too fast to switch focus, and Makoto's uncomforting personality is reduced to a cheap laugh. Junpei is just a background character, and Yukari... Oh yeah, she was in this film too. I don't want a rehash of the character exploration in the first film, but at least give us references, small hints, anything. But let's take Midsummer Night's example here and shove them aside for now and take a look at what we are being offered. I guess Ken Shinjiro. 
Igis being our Midsummer Knight is definitely an interesting character in that she must balance a human connection with some of the characters and the knowledge that once they've done their job, she will probably be deactivated. Her connection with Yuki makes him once again relevant in a story determined to leave him behind, and I really, really hope we get more focus on her in the next film, because if we're talking about this film, we're talking about Ken and Shinjiro. A compelling character conflict brought to life and it's interpreted with such passion and care that even one of the most hated characters in the game is explored in such a way that we as the audience can truly understand the events that led up to this climax. This takes centre stage within Midsummer Night's Dream and it is so compelling that I don't even mind that a large portion of the rest of the cast got shafted in terms of character exploration. It's just that good and provided something incredibly engaging. To reiterate my points from my Spring of Birth review, I found no issue with the art and absolutely love the soundtrack. And now in Midsummer Night I still adore the soundtrack, but now I'm really starting to like the visual design too. Maybe there was more to work with within this film, maybe it was the result of a talented, more creative art team, most likely option, a bit of both. Art detail, cinematic moments, high impact cinematography, even if it must resort to 3D animation, it represents an intense knowledge of the game's mechanics that can be reinterpreted so effectively. It's the treatment that Persona 3 fans want and deserve. Some of the shots here can just be gazed at for hours, they're wallpaper worthy shots. Which is why I've actually compiled a whole bunch of my favourites and you can download them at 1080p in the description below. The use of colour, shapes and visual effects makes for scenes that are nothing short of a spectacle and instantly draws your attention. As far as presentation goes, they've absolutely nailed it in both the visual and audio department. Although I still fucking hate Ken's voice actor, I guess he's annoying in any language really. And there we have it! Despite my overall preference of Persona 3 Spring of Birth, and my belief that the original director was far more talented, Taguchi is undoubtedly the bigger Persona fan between the two, and his understanding of the game makes for a great retelling. He completely understands the character conflicts going on here, and it shows. It fails to follow on from the original film effectively, but establishes the angle it wishes to take, and provides a great new interpretation, even if it is actually following the story this time around. There's value in both approaches, and honestly, I'm glad they both exist, as they make for two entirely new lenses into a game that I love. Persona 3 The Movie Midsummer Night's Dream is available to import from Aniplex. Limited editions are also available. Thanks for watching The Canopy Effects, and I will be reviewing the third film, Falling Down, as soon as it becomes available to a Western audience. You just swallow, we fool, you just shallow But we forget, we should take you as a fellow member I never like to hate cause motion's viral so contagious Got reaches, solar spread